the Alberta Education has uh, decided that we're going to cover three elimination reaction types. There are more um, that you'll see in university, but, but these are the three that are covered in our curriculum. Uh, in essence, you're going to take a saturated compound and you're going to rip off two things in order to form that double bond. So it's like the opposite of addition. So if I have already grabbed something, I'm going to let it go so that I can make a double bond happen. Okay. So here I have an alcohol. <clears throat> this is the first type of an elimination reaction. I have an alcohol plus an alkene, or par pardon me, leading to an alkene and water. And so here I'm going to rip off uh, my OH and I'm going to also rip off this H. So the, this carbon is going to let go, uh, pardon me, this, this carbon is going to let go of the OH in order to form the double bond, and the neighboring carbon is going to let go of the H in order to form the double bond. So you can see that they're absent here. They're gone, and here they are here, H and OH, and they've come together to make water. So they, they leave and they make water over here, and then these two carbons form that double bond that's there because they're now missing something, right? They're missing something, and so they form a double bond here. And so I've gone from an alcohol to an alkene. This would be, um, and, and remember, you're not always gonna get the structures to see them. You're gonna get the names. So this would be uh, butan 2 all um, under, under catalyst and heat forms what? And so you have to be able to draw butan 2 all and then figure out where that double bond's gonna go and then understand that that would be called but one en and water. Now the thing is, is that these two neighboring carbons let go, but actually I could have had, let's make this one in a different color, purple. Uh, and so I could have had my OH let go and this neighboring H let go and together they make water. So here I have that situation. I have this H and OH making water and now the vacancy exists here between that OH and that used to be an H there. And so the double bond has formed now between the this stick and that stick. So this stick and that stick have formed the double bond there. And so I'm gonna get a mixture here of but one en and but two en and water because the double bond could have formed, if I'm that middle carbon with the OH that I'm letting go, I could form my double bond this way or I could let go of the OH and form my double bond this way. It just depends on uh, uh, the, re the reaction mechanism. Okay, so that's one example. This is the next example. I have an alcohol again. I'm still in the alcohol, giving our alkene and water uh, formation reactions. So here I have cyclohexanol. Uh, and so I'm going to let go of my OH and a neighboring H. In this case, because it's a circle, it doesn't matter, right? It's neighbor, there's no top, it's a tire, it just keeps turning, whatever. Anyway, so uh, I decided to let go of that H and form the double bond here. So I've gone from hexan all into hexene, cyclohexene, cyclohexanol, cyclohexene, formed this double bond there, and I ended up with the H and the OH coming off and forming my water, and that double bond then sticking in there. Okay, so that's one type of elimination reaction where you have an alcohol, let's go of an OH and a neighboring H to reform that double bond, not reform, but to form a double bond, an alkene, and that water that's um, then there. So this is the exact opposite. We've seen this in addition. We took an alkene and water and formed an alcohol. This is the exact opposite of this. And this is how we make fuels from crops, right? Because we can take our crop and ferment it and get our alcohol. And then with heat and catalyst, we can form that double bond. Now this alkene can be used for fuel, right? It can be used to heat homes, or it can be used to make plastics. Lots of things can be done with this alkene in the fuel industry. Uh, and so this is a great way of having something that doesn't have um, a country that doesn't have resources of natural gas or of uh, crude oil and, and have them be able to still manufacture their um, their organic compounds, products, blah, 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 okay. Right, so here's a second type of elimination reaction. 
you have alkyl halides and a strong base. So it might say uh, react, in this case, it would say react chloroethane. Nope, this is ethane. React chloroethane with sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, uh, any kind of, or, or even just hydroxide ion. So I could call this lots of different names, right? Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, hydroxide ion, rubidium hydroxide, um, any kind of group one hydroxide, uh, or I could just say hydroxide ion. Okay, and what we're gonna do is, this is a little bit weird. So you should know that I'm gonna take my alkyl halide and form my alkene, so I am needing to create a double bond here. So I'm gonna take off that Cl for sure, and I'm gonna take off the neighboring H. So I'm gonna let go of the Cl, and the neighboring compound is gonna let go of the H, and then we can grab onto each other. So I've let go of the Cl, I can grab onto each other. So those two can let go of each other, uh, I can let go, I mean, and grab onto each other, and that's how I formed that double bond between those two carbons. Awesome. But the most common mistake is people think that, well, that just like the water did, these two should come together and make HCl, but they don't. What it makes is they're separate. I have the Cl and I have the H that are separate, and the H actually prefers its bond with the OH minus. So I'm gonna get HOH formed, HOH formed, and the Cl minus ends up by itself, okay? So in this case, I let go of the neighbors, brief, and I form a double bond there, and then I end up with water and that halide ion free flowing. So that's what this means. I have an haloalkyde, an alkyl halide, a strong base, forming an alkene, so there's my double bond, water, and my halide ion. Okay, there's one more elimination. Okay, I've saved the easiest example for last. We're gonna take an alkane, and with heat and catalyst again, heat and catalyst, not you can read that, but whatever. Uh, we're gonna form an alkene and hydrogen. So in this case, I'm gonna take my uh, alkane and I'm gonna rip off two neighboring, they have to be beside each other, otherwise I can't grab a double bond, right? So I'm gonna rip off two neighboring hydrogens there and they're gonna to come together and they're gonna to form H2. So <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I should fix that drawing. Okay, so they're gonna form H2. So here's my H2 that that formed. And then I have a situation here where this first carbon is missing a bond and that first carbon is, second carbon is missing a bond and so they form the double bond between them. So here's that double bond forming between them and I have but1ene formed, right? But1ene formed. So here though, I can fo also form but2ene because what can happen is I could take not just the first and second hydrogens could let go, but why not the second and third hydrogens that are gonna come off and form H2. So in this case, I have this H2 forming, the second and third are now missing a bond, and so they double bond together. And so I end up with a mixture of but1ene and but2ene and hydrogen forming. But essentially, I am letting go of a hydrogen in order to form my double bond. And the guy beside me is letting go of his hydrogen to form a double bond with me. So it has to be beside each other in order to form that double bond, okay? The mistake that people make is they take that hydrogen, I need another color, but whatever. The mistake that they make is they take that hydrogen with like this hydrogen off, like that doesn't work, okay? So that's not allowed. All right, and that's elimination reactions, the kinds that we cover under our syllabus anyway.